Thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, I'm Susanna Loshkovska. I'm professor at the Faculty of Computer Science and Engineering at Cyril and Methodius University in Skopje, North Macedonia. I'm by background, I'm engineer, and my story with OER started uh, three years ago with the Open Education for Better World project as a hobby, and now it's more uh, systematic uh, approach, uh, more systematic re research or field of interest for me. I will discuss uh, something that I am very uh, familiar uh, now uh, that are um, augmented reality and virtual reality technologies for OERs because I'm teaching virtual reality since 2008 at my faculty. Uh, in order to uh, define uh, what I will talk about, I will start from the very common definition of uh, open educational resources. I will not repeat the definition, but I will uh, use the activities that uh, uh, can be done with uh, OERs according the uh, defined or fulfilled circumstances. Uh, having this in mind that we can do something with these uh, OERs, the major questions that I am trying to answer here are which technology is required to use or reuse uh, uh, VR or ear based uh, OERs, uh, where to retain and how to redistribute uh, these kinds of materials and what is necessary to develop, remix or revise the materials. I will start with the definition of uh, both uh, terms, virtual reality and augmented reality. And what is interesting, there are a lot of definitions. Uh, they all seem similar, but they're quite different in their meaning. I will use the definitions that are more common for me and that uh, are more acceptable for me. According to the uh, most acceptable definition for me, virtual reality is a medium that is composed of interactive computer simulation that sends the participant position and actions and replace or augment the feedback to one or more senses, giving the feeling of being mentally immersed of in or present in the simulation. That means we have a technology who tries to convince us that we are on a place that we are really not in. That means we are in a world uh, that doesn't exist, but we feel that it exists. Uh, on the opposite side, augmented reality is enhanced version of the reality created by uh, in a computer by the use of the technology that overlay digital information on an image to something being viewed through the device. But this definition is not completely um, uh, enough for me. So I will add some uh, statements from Azuma, one of the pioneers in the field. Uh, to this definition that augmented reality in fact combines real worlds with virtual objects. That means adds virtual objects into the real worlds and it seems that it is a completely uh, the full world. Uh, it is interactive in real time and registered in 3D means that uh, all virtual objects are placed on a proper place in a proper time. In order to define the technology, we need to define first the key elements of each of these technologies. The key elements for the virtual reality include a virtual world, immersion, sensory feedback, and interactivity. A virtual world is the content of the virtual reality. That means uh, uh, it uh, consists of description of the objects uh, and everything that is happening into the virtual world. Uh, two main characteristics are important. Uh, the first one is that object, uh, objects have 3D appearance and behavior. And the next is that objects or the world exist independently from the user. We require technology to develop the virtual world and to manage uh, its behavior. Immersion is a term that is not related too much to the technology and it somehow measures the feeling of the user, how much he is present in the virtual environment. You can use the technology, but uh, you will not feel the present in the virtual technology, but you can also read a book and you will be fully immersed if the topic is uh, completely interesting for you. 
Sensory feedback uh, is related to the way how the virtual world uh, presents the output to the user. In fact, uh, as any world, a uh, virtual world will react to the user actions, but the output will be not standard uh, output devices of the computer system. Uh, uh, the output will be sensory, that will stimulate the sensory system of the humans. Uh, the stimuli can be visual, audio, tactile, ol olfactory, even the taste. Uh, we need uh, technology to generate those uh, stimulus to the uh, proper sensory system of the, of the participant. And finally, interactivity. You cannot consider a system to be a virtual reality if it's not interactive. Uh, a virtual world should react to the user comments similarly like a real world. That means at least a virtual world should react of the change of the, uh, the viewing point of the user. That means if you turn around, uh, the virtual world will react uh, by uh, presenting different uh, uh, view of the scene of the world where you are placed. So. Uh, if we are going to the uh, 3D Max studio, uh, studios, uh, we are experiencing, in fact, 3D. Uh, we have a 3D experience. We do not have any interactivity because everything is pre-recorded and we have only 3D experience with the world that is presenting to us. We need a technology also for the interactivity. Uh, let's look at the technology. Uh, it's a not a complete uh, a slide. I do not want to scare you. I uh, purposely uh, omitted the computer itself. That means the processing unit and all its characteristics will uh, be skipped in the my definition. Then I will not discuss about all of these things that are written in the slide. I will discuss uh, about the uh, most specific things that are currently used in the uh, attempts or the projects that are related to the OER in education uh, in the world. Uh, in, uh, we have a, a virtual world. We can interact with a virtual world uh, by uh, taking some in, uh, by giving some input. That means uh, taking some actions, uh, and the virtual world will. Uh, respond by uh, presenting some output to the user. Uh, related to the input, uh, we can divide the devices or the technology into main categories. Uh, the first one is tracking device, the second, why, uh, the second one are user actions. We can use classical or specially designed input devices for user actions. We can use speech as input. We can use haptic equipment. Haptic, in fact, are specially designed uh, uh, devices that, uh, in fact, uh, take uh, commands uh, by force or uh, using the human uh, tactile, uh, tactile system. But I will uh, point out more about the tracking devices. Uh, I previously mentioned that at least we need a tracking device in the virtual environment to become uh, interactive. Why? Because this tracking device, in fact, uh, monitors the position and the orientation of our eyes and define how it will render or present, which view of the vir virtual world will be rendered or presented to the user. Tracking device. Uh, can provide two different kinds of information for the uh, for the mm, uh, virtual world. This is the position of the tracking uh, tracked object, and the orientation of the tracked object. According to which body part should be tracked, uh, me at minimum the head should be tracked, uh, because uh, uh, the mo uh, it is the most important uh, what to represent to the user. But if you are using a gesticulation uh, for interaction, uh, usually even the hands and other parts of the human body uh, will be tracked. Uh, again, it's not necessary always to provide both information about the position and orientation. It depends which kind of uh, virtual reality uh, system you use. 
in the low cost virtual reality or non immersive low, uh, virtual reality when you are using the ordinary computer system usually you are tracking only the position of the head because it is supposed that you are looking at a computer screen when you are working with the virtual world a uh, world on the opposite side when you have a fully immersive uh, virtual reality that means you are using a special device to uh, uh, for visual output that uh, uh, this uh, fully immersive uh, computer uh, a virt a virtual reality uh, system in fact um, i have uh, this uh, head mounted device in front of the user so the orientation is the most important part uh, when we are looking at uh, the point of output of the uh, virtual reality system uh, we can also divide uh, the signals that will be generated or presented to the users according to the uh, sensory that will be generated. We will not discuss about the audio and haptic equipment. Audio uses speakers or earphones or earbuds to uh, generate the uh, stimuli. Haptic equipment uses force or tactile information to transfer the uh, result. But we will discuss about the visual devices. Uh, the point is that uh, the objects in virtual world should exist in 3D. So to the user, we, we, uh, we cannot present uh, a two-dimensional image of 3D world. We should present a 3D, a 3D uh, uh, virtual world. In that context, a very simple trick or very simple uh, approach is used. Uh, the virtual system present a picture or an image of the world uh, for each uh, two different uh, image, images of the world for each eye of the user. So uh, the images could be presented on a computer monitor. Uh, projectors could be used also to project uh, the images on the wall or some other um, uh, uh, surface. Uh, we can use a stack at the um, monitors uh, to project the images and so on. And the main point here is in order to sort out which image should be presented to which eye, we require additional technologies that the special designing glasses, uh, which can be developed in different kinds of technologies on different, uh, use different approaches, how they will separate the picture uh, for the left or the uh, right eye. Uh, there are additional two uh, technologies that are very, mm, that can be used uh, to present the output. The first are uh, autostereoscopic devices. This is the new uh, approach in the research where you will not uh, require any uh, additional glasses, but uh, additional optic will be used uh, in front of the computer display in order to sort out or to, uh, uh, to uh, split the um, uh, image for each of the eyes. And finally, something that we really connected with the virtual reality are so-called uh, uh, HMDs or head mounted devices. They're headsets uh, equipped with the two displays, one for each eye, and uh, images are presented to, for each eye separately. Uh, they use also the uh, optic to properly uh, present the image to the user. And these headsets can be equipped with the tracking sensors, uh, AirPods or AirPhones uh, in order to provide audio signal and so on. At present, the most uh, probably in frequently used- Five minutes uh, left. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, the, most, uh, uh, the most used uh, uh, virtual reality system is a mobile uh, virtual reality system that has a minimal uh, with minimal configuration it uses a smartphone and internal sensors uh, for a tracking a smart uh, smartphone display is used to present the pictures uh, this slide presents several examples and taking into account the time that i have uh, spent i will uh, skip to the most important part of the rest of the slide the key elements of the IR exper uh, experience are IR 
application that takes the input from the uh, world, uh, combines the logic of the system and presents the output. The content is similarly defined for uh, as in the VR interaction, minimal interaction requires um, uh, tracking of the user and physical world is part of the IR system. Again, uh, we have the similar way of uh, uh, input and output devices for the uh, artificial uh, augmented reality here. The tracking system is required uh, in order to, uh, to take the information where the user is looking at and to provide this information to the processing unit in order to uh, present the properly the uh, the output of the system. We can use classical display or we can use any equipment for virtual reality to present the output of the system. Here is also several examples. Uh, HoloLens as a standalone headset and mobile IR with, which uses smartphone to present the IR information. When we are discussing about the software techno technology, we have three different uh, points to discuss about. The first one is the tools for content development. That means the tools that we are, we are using for developing the content on the virtual or augmented reality part of the virtual world. Then development tools that connect everything inside the one system. And finally, the application that uh, considers the management of the um, everything into the uh, uh, final system. That means uh, application uh, takes the input, uh, process the output and uh, renders the, uh, renders the uh, world. The, and the next two slides, in fact, uh, uh, somehow are not intended to provide you a very big information about uh, what is going on with virtual development tools, but to ask you uh, how you will select the development tools. You need to ask yourself uh, which equipment will your user will use, on which platform uh, the system will be uh, deployed, or which platform you will use to develop the system, what is the price of the tool, do you need a programming um, uh, experience or a additional programmer, and who will develop or modify the system. And this is the similar with augmented reality development tools. Taking into account the last point that there, uh, about the repositories, we can uh, find assets or a description, digital description of the uh, objects into the virtual world uh, from the public repositories or development tool repositories free or paid. Uh, we can use even the public repositories that we use uh, for dev uh, download, but there is no general purpose uh, repository uh, into the, like, uh, for example, Merlot or any other uh, elements. Uh, mostly repositories are project related websites and application with uh, several uh, characteristics. Websites serve as uh, award viewers, development tools, repositories, they also provide applications that are available from mobile platforms. Some websites offer a viewer experience if you have a viewer set and are uh, specific uh, uh, related to the specific topic. Examples are given on the slide. Susanna, can you wrap finally, up? Uh, this is my last slide, I'm sorry. And finally, this is my conclusion around about the virtual technology. It's a dedicated technology and software is required. Uh, technology can be very costly. Users should learn the technology. Users all, um, and teachers uh, also need to figure out how to use the technology and how to incorporate the technology in their courses. Sometimes courses should be redesigned. It takes a time. It can be time consuming and costly. Uh, costly. You need a special developer that will face the problem of uh, how to select proper development tools. If you want uh, your uh, resource to be accessible for multiple platform, you need additional work and it's not optimal just to transfer the content from one platform to another platform. My ultimate wish all who are um, 
lovers to Star Trek uh, franchise will know what I'm thinking about. Uh, for VR, it's the uh, existence of Holodeck and for augmented Thank reality. Thank you very much. I have to stop you oh, now. <laughs>